Hey guys, welcome back. This is part five of the pontoon restoration series. Now last week I took all of the paneling off the old fence. We replaced it with brand new paneling, painted the fence. It looks really sharp. This week we got to put it all together. So we're mounting the motor, putting the furniture back on. It's going to look like a real pontoon. Let's get going. <laughs> All right, to start off, I had to get the furniture back on and luckily I had my buddies over here to help me do the heavy lifting. After getting the furniture and the fence up onto the deck, it was uh, just the task to move it all around, get it centered and aligned where it needs to be um, to see before we make any marks and mount it all down for its new permanent place. This stuff slides around pretty easy on that vinyl deck that we put on. So it took no time at all to get this aligned up. With it all aligned, I went around the edges and made sure it was centered and marked out all of the hole locations where we're gonna be bolting down the frame. All right, the next morning, it was time to cut out the wood that's gonna go in the transom. I had some marine plywood left over. Uh, unfortunately, the size of the transom, it's, a, it's one and a half inches thick, and all I had was the three quarter inch uh, marine grade plywood. So we're gonna have to cut that um, twice and glue it together. To do that, I just took the old transom and I stenciled around it. Then to make sure I have a super straight cut, I have this clamp uh, down style um, cut guide for my circular saw. I really like this tool. It takes all the, the guesswork out of making straight cuts and sheet goods. And if you're looking to buy any of the tools that I'm using um, that you might see in my videos, I do have some Amazon affiliate links down below. Um, I'm just starting off trying that out uh, to see if I can help you out. It doesn't cost you anything more, um, but I might be able to make a little money if you're looking to buy that. All right, next thing we got to do is glue this thing together. Now I'm using uh, Type Bond 3, which is a waterproof glue. Um, it's it's pretty, pretty darn tough. Um, I, in fact, I spilled some on my garage floor earlier this year, and I haven't been able to get it up. <laughs> and with all the glue on the board, I'm working it into the green with this uh, silicone uh, kitchen utensil. I'm not really sure. I think it's for basting turkeys or glazing them, something like that. It was a buck at the dollar store, so it's a pretty, uh, pretty nice tool to have, and then it cleans up really easy. All right, with all the glue on, next you gotta give it the clamps. With that glue setting up, I'm going back and I'm priming the deck uh, trim pieces, and then we're gonna go ahead and paint those black. Well, that primer's drying, our glue has set up on the transom. Now I'm gonna go back here and sand down any excess glue that's on the surface. It's important to get this all off uh, while you can. Uh, otherwise, the marine grade varnish that I'm gonna be putting on next won't uh, get to the wood. It's just gonna hit that layer of glue. Coat the whole thing with a waterproofing varnish. Now this isn't necessary for marine grade plywood, but I really wanted just an extra layer of waterproofing on this because part of it probably is gonna sit a little bit below the water line. I added a little bit of mineral spirits to the varnish to thin it out so it absorbs uh, farther into the wood. This just means that we're gonna have to have a few more coats. So I'm gonna go back and forth while I'm painting the trim and uh, adding another coat of varnish to this and I did this about three times. All right, well, the both the trim and transom are drying. Uh, I went back to the fence panels and now we got to mount all those down. Now I made marks where the hole locations were and now I just need to do the math to actually drill the holes. So 
The final measure twice and drill into the boat once. Now this is pretty straightforward and all it is is a big uh, machine screw and then there's a little spacer block that we put underneath the frame and this lifts the whole frame and fence up um, about a quarter inch. That way if you do get water, rain, or whatever onto the pontoon deck that it has an avenue to escape back into the uh, into the water so it just doesn't you know pool up right in the deck and uh, rot out your furniture um, the one difficulty is because it is a screw uh, trying to uh, fasten that down underneath you have to hold a screwdriver in one hand and a ratchet in the other there wasn't a ton of space underneath um, I did try to get a power uh, driver in there and it was just kind of getting bound up on the side um, so I tried a couple different things, but doing it by hand the long way uh, <laughs> seemed to work the best. One of the issues I had, the front door was bent a little and it might have been just from years of going in and out, I'm not quite sure. So what I did with that to get the uh, hinges back to where I wanted them. Uh, I took two clamps in the front and just basically squeezed that frame together until it uh, realigned the door. I really hope you're enjoying this video so far. If you are, please hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos that I make, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate all of the viewers that I have. I think it's really awesome uh, that it's so many of you like watching what I do. With the fence bolted down and the trim piece and transom had dried uh, overnight, we're gonna go back uh, the next morning here and we gotta mount all the furniture down. Now I'm using a, a large head uh, deck screw that's gonna just go right through the furniture and right into that plywood below. Now I wasn't quite sure if this uh, furniture was green treated or not. It looked like it was at one point. Um, so I'm using coated screws and that's important because the chemical waterproofing in that uh, green treated plywood will eat right through your hardware if you don't use the right kind. Now for the back seat, I left a little bit of gap on the starboard side of the boat. This is spot looks almost perfect for a rod holder. Um, they're usually, once you get everything together, is never enough space for all the little things that you want in your boat. So I figured putting that there would be a nice feature later down the river. When it came to mounting the helm, I did the same thing. I left a little gap in front where we could store a throwable flotation device. Now this is one of those things that I usually see on people's boats, but it's usually buried under a bunch of stuff in the seat and that in an emergency is probably not gonna help if it's buried um, under your fishing gear. Next, I mounted the seat up and got that adjustment just the way I want it. With all that furniture fastened down, it was time to put the transom together. Now, we took our wood um, from yesterday that we had sealed up, and I've got these two pieces of aluminum that I had made, and we're going to clamp those together. Uh, which is going to add a bunch of rigidity to that transom so we're going to be able to put a larger motor. Now this originally only had that nine horsepower motor on it but with the new transom and the new plate that we made um, we should have no problem putting a larger motor. The transom in place and securely fastened down I went to go pull some of the old control lines and route the steering cable back to the helm. Now when I did this I opened the box for the wiring that had originally came off in May and uh, I have no idea where any of this stuff goes. If anyone knows how to wire this up, leave me a comment below. <laughs>
So instead of running wires to the wrong place, I decided I'm just going to finish the trim and call it a day until we can get uh, the motor mounted and, and I can go back and look at uh, some pictures to see what the heck I did. Now originally with the trim, I wanted to go with brand new stuff. Uh, however, the price that they want uh, just wasn't worth it to me. And uh, it was all out of stock anyway. So uh, painting this stuff, I think it looks really nice. I'm not quite sure how the black's gonna do in the sun on bare feet. It's probably gonna get a little hot. But uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, should I get new trim? Should I leave it black? Uh, yeah. All right, I got quite a bit done this weekend, but not as much as I'd hope. I did not get the motor mounted. I'm not really sure how to get uh, this guy here onto here by myself. So I might have to wait until uh, I can get a few friends over and we're gonna see what we can do with that. But yeah, it looks starting to look pretty good. We got all the furniture uh, in place. I still have to get some of these uh, stains here off of this old furniture and uh, you know, <laughs> gotta get everything else wired up. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.